Hello, everybody, and welcome into a new edition of the Patriots Catch-22 podcast, coming to you from Raiders headquarters in Las Vegas. I've heard somebody call it the Taj Mahal before, <laughs> once upon a time. Here with Alex Barth, as always, but we have a very special guest with us today. It's the director of the Shrine Bowl, Eric Galco. Eric, we've had you on our old show before. Yeah. Now we have you on the new show, which is pretty cool. And last year, we talked to you about the four Patriots that were drafted from the Shrine Bowl. Now that they coach the game, there's probably going to be 10 Patriots yeah. that we see in training camp in August. But uh, thanks so much for joining us, and we're happy to have you on. I appreciate it. Yeah, four last year and two more signed after the draft. I'm expecting the full Patriots draft to come to the Shrine Bowl. It's my expectations <laughs> this year for sure. So Absolutely. So for people that don't know, just quickly, Tyquan Thornton, Pierre Strong, Jack Jones, Sam Roberts, right? Yep, I got that's it. The four. Those are the four guys that were drafted by the Pats, but they also signed some UDFAs from the Shrine Bowl. And that wasn't even with Bill Belichick being here and right. coaching the team. So I can only imagine uh, we have a bunch of questions for you about prospects, but just in general, uh, tell us a little bit about the Shrine Bowl and what yeah. type of kid is at the Shrine Bowl in terms of where they're going to get drafted in the hopes of where they're going to get drafted. Yeah, the Shrine Bowl is first off to benefit Shriners Children's Hospital around the country too. So it allows the, the awareness to be out there as well as all, all money made at the stadium, ticket sales, sponsors, all that kind of stuff goes towards the Shriners Children's Hospital. But as far as players, these players are here. It's our job to make sure these players are taken care of all week long. They have practice in the morning and interviews in the afternoon and chance to impress NFL teams in all sorts of ways too. But we'll have players here that are first round picks, players that are top 100 picks, players that are late round picks, players like Isaiah Pacheco and Brock Purdy who are afterthoughts late in the seventh round who end up starting playoff games and maybe going to late playoff runs and Super Bowls. So it's a good mix of players all the way around all across the country. Power five, Alabama, Georgia guys versus guys from Wagner College and D2 plays as well too. So it's a good mix of guys all around the draft and all around the country. Yeah, absolutely. Isaiah Pacheco, Alex, and I go back and forth on that one. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was the guy. Look, they got some good players in the game last year. Yeah. That's one more. Um, Pierre will be fine. Pierre will be fine. Oh, no, no, no. no. I'm excited, we love excited, for right, yeah, excited for him, too. Yeah, excited for him, too. It's a lot of speed. It was yeah. The two fastest 40s last year. Yeah. The combine, right, came from and this game. And then Taekwon was at this game. And then Taekwon, too, yeah. So, yeah. So speed bowl uh, yeah, could we'll, be. We'll have more of that this year, too. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so that's what the game's been. The new wrinkle this year is yeah. the setup with the coaching staffs and having the full NFL team versus coaches from all different teams, what's it been like to have Bill Belichick? And I know the Falcons too, but from the Patriots' <laughs> yeah. point of view, have Bill Belichick kind of get that process yeah, started? Yeah, I feel bad for Arthur Smith sometimes. He's kind of the second guy here, but unfortunately. <laughs> but no, but it's, it's been fantastic having the two NFL staffs here, and the Patriots especially have been great to our staff and our team, but I think for our players, the chance to even just meet Coach Belichick is cool, not to mention being coached by him on special teams, whatever else. I talked to a few players who said he's kind of – we were in awe, but kind of exactly what we heard he'd be, right? He'd be intimately involved in the details, be in the back of the media rooms, but chiming in on these small little things. And I think a lot of these players have learned to appreciate kind of that Patriot way of caring about the small things and knowing how they lead to bigger things. And I think between our players, the coaches, Troy Brown, the, the assistant coaches this week that are kind of being a level up as well, have seen that attention to detail and why that matters to the Patriots so much. Yeah, it's funny. We were watching practice this morning and we didn't see Coach Belichick right away. And then he's just in the middle of the drill, like <laughs> yeah. 10 minutes into practice. All of a sudden, he's just there. And, you know, we're all texting each other. Oh, Bill's on the field. He's on yeah. the field. You know, make sure we get a, uh, footage of him and everything. But it's super funny to just see him just right in the middle of the drill, just interject right. himself right in the middle. And uh, it's been really cool to watch him work, as I'm sure that it's been cool for everybody here to watch him work and, and see him be so hands on. Okay. We, Alex and I have talked about probably 30 to 40 of these guys so far on the podcast. This is where we just are going to pepper you with let's different it. names. Well, let's do this because something we've done this week is like who kind of gets brought up unprompted, right? Who stood out to you the most? Who surprised you the most before we give you our names? I watched get a lot new, of the O-line D-line. I think O-line okay. D-line is a great chance for NFL teams to get a good look at these guys. And sometimes you get lost in the sauce, that quarterback receiver sometimes. And it's always a, a connection it's to build there. True. But O-line oh, D-line, yeah. you can kind of see like, wow, who stood out? And I think uh, Moro Jomo from Texas, a D-lineman. Yeah. It's been fantastic. A lot of NFL teams like him. I've heard some really high grades from NFL scouts on him. Dante Stills of West Virginia, a guy who played a kind of a weird role in West Virginia's defense and got a chance to be a just traditional three-tech this week and one as a pass rusher. They really impressed. Connor Galvin of Baylor on the other side of the ball, offensive tackle. I think talking to teams have the best chance to be the first offensive lineman draft from the Shrine Bowl as well, too. So the big guys up front, I want to start there because that's unfair those guys get pushed aside too much. Those three guys had great weeks. Yeah, the kid from Texas, I'm terrible at names. Moro Jomo. Moro Jomo. There you go. He walked somebody back into the backfield during <laughs> yeah. one-on-ones there, and I was standing maybe 10, 15 yards behind the drill. Yeah. I almost wasn't far enough away from the drill, which I was, yeah. and he just bull rushed the guy right yeah. back. We've noticed him a bunch yeah, of times as it, well. It's funny. I looked him up, and he, he like, the way he plays, I'm like, all right, I looked up the height weight. He's got to be like 6'4", 330. 
It's like 6'3", 300. Yeah. Like he plays so far above yeah. what he's listed at. It, in a, at that position specifically, you see that. I mean, it's hard not to and, take and notice. And he's got a teammate here, Keandre Coburn, but they had another defensive tackle at Texas last year, Tavondre Sweat, who stayed in school. And Mora only played like 300 snaps this year because they work on a rotation. So that's what all-star games are so good for is that you see a guy who maybe didn't get a chance to show something in college or a different scheme or also a guy that may have been considered a, a backup, a rotational player, come here and maybe one of the first guys drafted. So you mentioned getting caught up with the quarterbacks and yeah. wide receivers. Very guilty of that. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Yes. And uh, yesterday, Alex and I were, were, were really going to watch the O-line, D-line today. Like, yeah. That's our job here today. But I have to ask you about a few of the receivers, Let's do it. especially with the Patriots. They're still searching for that number one guy. We all know that. And there are a couple guys out there this week. I, I want to start with Zay, but we've talked yeah. a lot about a Zay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, he's all over the place. He only practiced the one day, but really impressive kid. And, and you saw that burst in the speed right away. Yeah, I think for Zay, first and foremost, he has been fantastic in his NFL teams. He has been one of the guys that NFL teams were so excited to talk to. He was very busy in the interview process, as you can imagine, yeah. being a guy who has a great chance, if not a, a definite guy, to be a first round pick. But I think he's approached the interview so well. And he is an incredible competitor incredible character, football guy that want to, wants to just play football right away, too. He's got a great personality. He could be a leader in the locker room as well, too, but he's a guy that just wants to win and wants to play football. He's been outstanding. And then his day of practice was as advertised. Yeah. Um, he was the most explosive receiver out there, too. Another guy here, Demario Douglas, Pop Douglas from Liberty, who's also twitchy, also fast, and Zay was a little bit faster was, than him, He was too. on our list to ask you as well. Yeah, so, wait, does, does he have a nickname you kind of just put him? Pop Douglas. Pop Douglas. Pop Douglas. Oh, okay. yeah, it's a good name. Because I was going to say, when, when Zay comes off the field, we're watching that role, that yeah. slot receiver role, and he definitely flashed. Yeah, so I think he and Zay were the two guys that were twitchy, fast, returner ability, slot receiver ability, too. And I think Zay had his great week of practice, and I think Zay's going to be a slam dunk first round pick. And I think more importantly, a slam dunk longtime NFL receiver in the NFL is a guy who I kind of compare him to. This sounds generous. Deshaun Jackson meets Jalen Waddell. Ooh, that's why I think Zay flops me in the NFL, too. And I think one thing on Zay, I'm sure you guys have watched a lot of Zay being in the Northeast. Yeah. Zay, the offense at BC was a challenge this year, and he was by far the best player, and they had to get plays to him all the time. And he's a small receiver and still got separation. I think he's learned through trial by fire on how to get through double teams, get through great big plays when the offense is supposed to go to you, too. So I think he's a guy that could be a number one receiver in the NFL right away. Yeah, we were talking to him at the Cluster interview the yeah. other day, and I asked him, what's your favorite route? Like, what's the route you want to run? And he said a double move. And yeah. I was like, okay, I mean, that makes sense. But I thought what really stood out was how quick he is to run the short and intermediate routes right. as well. And that, I think, is something that the Patriots over the years, I mean, going all the way back to Troy Brown, you know, Troy yeah. Brown, Deion Branch, Wes Welker, Edelman, uh, that role has been such a big part of their offense. And now with Bill O'Brien back as offensive coordinator, I don't want people to get caught up in thinking that Zay is just a 4-3 guy. Like, this yeah. is somebody that can really get in and out of a break as well. Well, same for Taekwon a year ago. I kept telling people one of Taekwon's best skill sets was in the red zone. And people thought 4-2 speed, can get downfield, get vertical, and he definitely can do that. But we saw this year with the Patriots. The red zone was the big thing I loved about Taekwon. I think you watch Zay Flowers' film, great in the red zone. Those whip routes, those yeah. quick slants, back of the end zone kind of stuff. So I think Zay has, people think, oh, speed guy, just can get downfield. We've seen how the Dolphins use Jalen Waddell. I think between that and how the a lot of teams want to win in the red zone with smaller receivers now, He's the kind of guy that can score touchdowns, not just create big plays. Yeah, the whip route against Clemson. Right. I posted yeah. that on Twitter, and I was like, I'm sold. Yeah. Just take, <laughs> take, him, take him in the first round. I'm good. Yeah. And yeah. it was, I mean, that was Edelman-esque, right, yeah. to get yeah. in and out of that. So we talk about the little shifty guys. Not to call them little. That was rude. Uh, the smaller shifty guys. <laughs> go. Let's go with that. Scrappy. Uh, there you scrappy. Go. <laughs> and I want to ask you about an outside guy, an A.T. Perry yeah. from Wake Forest, who I thought in one-on-ones in particular really shined out here. And... We had known that he was somebody that we wanted to come in and watch when we came to Vegas. Didn't really disappoint me too much. He looked pretty good out there. What do you right. see about him? Yeah, he's one of the bigger guys out here, taller guys out here too. And I think his 2021 play at Wake Forest was maybe better than 2022 because some of the offense stuff they were going through in transitions. But, I mean, a dominant downfield receiver, a guy who can win those jump balls. But I think more importantly for a bigger receiver, he's not just a jump ball receiver. He can separate on those dig routes, those post routes, the deep comebacks. He showed that with Sam Hartman having their great connection too. But I think AT showed that – he can still win as a route runner, but also can adapt quickly to other quarterbacks. And I think one of the cool parts about quarterback receiver connections at all-star games is who kind of picks it up fast, right? You've never thrown with these quarterbacks before until you get here. you got to learn quickly the timing, the route depth, and all those kind of things. I think AT's figured that very, very quickly with Aiden O'Connell and his quarterbacks on the East team. Yeah. So another guy who you talk about getting on the same page quickly who stood out to me in that regard and also has top two top three catches this week is Justin Shorter from yeah. Florida. What have you yeah. thought of him? He's been fantastic this Great week. Great week from him. He yeah. and uh, his teammate Bryce Ford Wheaton of West Virginia are going to have absolutely outstanding NFL combines. Like, wait till you see these numbers. They're going to be 
we're going to see some DK Metcalf compares with these guys as well, too. But Justin's a guy that always had that from his time at Penn State to now in Florida. Physically impressive. He takes, you know, puts his pads up and has the abs going. You're like, who the heck is that guy? But the dominant week of practice on the outside, winning as a deep route separator against some really good corners on the West team, I thought was really impressive, too. But you mentioned to be able to track the ball with a new quarterback. The ball's always going to be a little underthrown, a little overthrown. And I think Justin's shown the ability to adapt to that with his physical ability and the kind of four four speed that he has, he's a pretty special player. Yeah. I love these events for this reason, because I got to be honest, Justin Shorter was not on my radar yeah. until I got here. And yeah. now it's like, all right, well now I got to go watch that kid. Ex- right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. He's got some great size explosiveness that play to end practice. The, at the, I think it was uh, the Saturday, second day, the second yeah, day. Yeah. The double move at the end yep. of practice. And uh, we were talking about it, you know, Zay was on one side, he was on the other and it was kind of like best on best yep. and Shorter was able to go in and actually caught the ball. Uh, from Dorian Torren, uh, Thompson Robinson from yep. UCLA, who I wanted to ask you about. I've been really impressed with him. I knew he could run, and I yep. think we all knew he could run, but playing in structure, throwing from the pocket, I, he told me he's been working with Jordan Palmer. It yep. looks like that's paying dividends. Yep. Uh, what have you seen from him this week? Yeah, I think, and I've made, and everyone's asked me who the next Brock Purdy is, right? No one's made the same mistake again, too. And I think he and Dorian don't initially be like you know, comparable players, but I think one thing a lot of people, and myself included, learn about evaluating Brock Purdy is that even as a four-year NFL or college starter like Brock was, he still had room to get better, right? He saw so many things at, at Iowa State, saw blitzes, saw really good defense, Oklahoma, Texas defenses, that he he's able to go against really complex and really talented defenders and able to kind of digest that as an improvising quarterback. But also, he was getting better. Uh, I think SI, Connor Orr, did a great story on Brock Purdy getting better and increasing his velocity in the, in, the, in the draft process that led him to be a guy the Niners wanted to get in target. And I think Dorian's the same kind of way. We kind of watch these guys for three, four years. And we kind of know who they are. Yeah, he's this. He's okay. He's just okay. And I think we don't appreciate the kind of journey Dorian's been on his college career and what he's seen and what he's learned. And you add to the fact that, yes, with Jordan Palmer, Dorian has increased his RPMs on that football. He has made himself more balanced as a pocket passer and outside the pocket too. So I think Dorian's a guy like Brock who should not be underappreciated because he's a guy that we've seen a lot. Maybe doesn't have any sort of freaky arm talent or athletic ability, but he can move. He's really twitchy, but I think he's also shown he's a really good pocket passer and downfield passer. And again, he's been embracing the challenge of learning this Patriots offense all week long. I know he turned some heads in the red zone on day one, made some really great throws down there. And people took notice of the zip in the ball that's coming out of his hands a little bit better than it was at UCLA. Kudos to to Jordan, I'm sure, on that one. All right, we moving on to defense now? Uh, is that the offense? I think I think, I think, I think we covered it pretty well. We did the tight oh, the ends. Tight ends yeah, the tight ends. The tight ends. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, uh, Baker, Barker from Michigan State yeah. we've liked. And uh, Whitehart from, from Wake Forest. Yeah. Whitehart's a guy that from Wake Forest reminds me a lot of a guy we had a year ago, Chig Okongwo from Maryland. I mean, the okay. fourth round pick for the, for the Tennessee Titans. Maybe yeah. he won't be as fast as Chig was. Chig ran a low 4-5, which was by far the fastest of any tight end in a long time. But I think Whitehart has the same ability to kind of win as a short area guy, but has that wheel route ability, that seam ability to win as a route run. I did that during practice as well, too. And then I mentioned Daniel Barker, I mean, looks yeah. the part, right? Oh, I mean, he yeah. He is physically yeah. impressive. He and Leonard Taylor for the other team are physically look like NFL tight ends, but Barker can block at a high level. He's done that really well in the run game, but I think his ability to win in that seam and win as those deep kind of post and, and corner routes are really impressive for him. The other thing that stood out to me about those two guys, the motor. Yeah. Like, you see them just in individual drills blocking the pad, and yeah. they are running right through that pad, and I think that's a position that, you know, tight end, there's just a lot of want to there. Yeah. And those are two guys that very much look like they want to. Yeah, I think, that, I mean, the tight end's back in the NFL. I think a large part of that is because you want to run more 11 and 12 personnel so you can kind of go up tempo and not make as many subs. So you need a, a tight end who could be a receiving tight end as well as a really effective blocker and you kind of change your formations a little bit too. So I think Barker fits that very well. And Whitehart's kind of that H who can play some slot, maybe some fullback if need be. Barker's that why tight end who can also get yeah. separation against linebackers and safeties well i don't know where to put these two guys so yeah. i'm gonna say this is a good transition oh, i was gonna do this <laughs> well <laughs> the two-way guys that, that's why that's why yeah. I'm a approach, right? that's a yeah. good point so uh, jack coletto and uh parish right yeah. and i i think both of them have stood out as pass catchers yeah honestly and i think we've seen coletto more on offense this week from what i can uh, recall and I've just have been really impressed with how natural both those guys have looked running routes, which was not something they did a ton of because they were playing so many yeah. different roles. I mean, Coletto played a little bit of fullback in college. Derek Parrish didn't play any fullback in college. So I was a little bit worried being like, how would they adapt to get here? But they both worked their butt off. And I think Coletto's a guy that's played, what, quarterback, running back, yeah. fullback, tight end, yeah. H-back, linebacker, uh, yeah, Wildcat, right? All in Oregon State career, too. And he's been fantastic. And I think this week he's shown the tight end ability that teams want to see teams want to see, Hey, can he be a secondary tight end as well as a fullback to get that fullback spot is kind of going away in the NFL as we well know, but maybe making a bit of a comeback with Kyle Juszczyk. And I think playing tight as well helps too. And then 
Derek Parrish, I mean, he had, what, seven sacks in like two games this year and then unfortunately yeah. got hurt. So he can be a pass rusher. And multiple teams have told me he's a guy that, hey, if he can be our third or fourth D end and our fullback who can make use of the backfield, it'd be hard not to draft that kind of guy too. And they both embrace that challenge doing a lot of things. It's it's hard in all-star games to do a lot of things and they've embraced it. Yeah, we've loved Coletto all week, but yesterday Parrish yeah. ran something in uh, one-on-ones. He ran a really crisp route. Yeah. I was like, he doesn't even, how much has he done this? Like, yeah. you know, it was yeah. pretty impressive. Yeah. All right, defense. All right, I got to start with the guy who's, I think, been the highlight player of the week on defense, Trey Dean. Yeah. Talked to him at the beginning of the week before any practice, had a ton of confidence. I was like, if he can play, like if he can back up the way he talks with the, with the way he plays, he's going to be something. And I would say he exceeded my expectations in that regard. Trey's been a guy I've liked for a long time. We actually invited him to last year's Shrine Bowl as well. He's had to go back to school and improve his draft stock. And I think he athletically, again, this is a common theme you'll hear. He's going to be one of the best tests with the NFL Combine. 40 yeah. plus inch vert, 4-3 speed. He's, he's freaky in that sense. But I think he's shown this week the ability to work as a cover two safety, as a man matchup cover safety. And the ability to work downfield in coverage is really hard for safeties nowadays in the NFL, but he's got the height and size and length and athletic ability to do it. And he's shown this week that he can do it in terms of reading coverages and reading receivers. So let me ask you this. He played, you know, he, he really split evenly playing deep, playing box, yep. playing slot. Where have you heard teams kind of see him or is the idea that you draft him and play him everywhere? No, I think this week of practice has changed a lot of teams' minds and kind of go back to the drawing board. Hey, we didn't know if he can do, you know, I always tell people it's either, are you a tweener? Are you a both? Are you a neither? Right? Sometimes right. they think, oh, this guy can do a little bit of everything, but he can't do anything well. And I think Trey wanted to show NFL teams he could do all three things you just said at an NFL level. And I think that's what NFL teams were excited about to say, hey, is he just an athlete on special teams and we'll kind of see how he does or can actually play safety, play some nickel corner for us? And he's shown this week against some really good receivers, as you guys have seen that he can match up downfield in the short area, prevent those whip routes, work against the dig route, protect the deep post. So he's done a really good job all week long in all types of coverages. Sticking with safeties, we also mentioned A.J. Finley from Ole Miss yeah. a couple of times. And it's the first day of practice. We saw him in positional drills, and he was doing the pedal drill. And I was like, oh, this kid can get out. Yeah. Like, this kid's going to be able to play some deep safety. And he had three interceptions yeah, in practice bad. the other day. Uh, what have you seen from him? Yeah, he's been an awesome person. He'd love to be here. He's had so much fun being in Vegas, which I appreciate too. But I think he's adapt to the defense very quickly. And it's always interesting to see which guys kind of pick up the defense or offense quicker than others. And it's it's hard sometimes because you want to make sure your teammates are on the same page, especially running an offense and a defense. But AJ picked things up super fast. And I think he's ability to adapt in multiple different safety alignments, free and strong safety, made him pay dividends. And I think a lot of times in all-star games, sometimes interceptions happen because a quarterback and receiver on the same page, but three in one practice. Yeah. That's, that's not that's luck not for mistake. sure. Yeah. Not luck at all. Yeah. And there was uh, the two kids from Minnesota too. I, I, yeah. What are they feeding those kids? And I know, Land? I know uh, Terrell Smith's the guy. I think every NFL team's looking for the next Tariq Woolen, the six, two, six, three, six, four athletic for his corner. And again, I, I, I'm being a dead horse here. He's going to run a four, three. He's super athletic, yeah. super long, but he's had a great week of practice too this week. Yeah. Let me ask you about another corner who I think you're going to say the same thing about yeah. the, the athleticism, be a little smaller, but he plays much bigger, and that's Keytrail Clark. Yeah. Blew up three screens this week against big wide receivers blocking him. Had a really nice pick in one-on-ones. What have you seen from him? Yeah, I mean, I don't think NFL people on the outside, maybe people in the NFL sometimes too, we see the rise of the slot receiver. We're not appreciating how valuable the slot corner is right now. And Keytrail Clark is comfortably, in my opinion, at least the best slot corner in the 2023 NFL draft. I think if you want to have a guy that's going to start tomorrow for you in the nickel, like Jack Jones, I think, could do in the future as well. Hey, this is Keytrail Clark can do that tomorrow. But he also showed this week he plays some outside corner as well, too. Right? We're seeing motions happen where slot guys are on the outside. You got to have guys that can play in the nickel and be physical, blow up screens, but also go against those quicker, twitchier slot receivers and also work outside. So Keytrail's had a fantastic week. I think he has a good chance to be one of the top players drafted from here. It's interesting you compared him to yeah. Jack Jones because when me and Evan were watching him, that's exactly what we said. Similar was, size, similar yeah. size, similar play style for sure. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that with Terrell Smith, though, that even though. Tariq Woolen's obviously a, yeah. a lofty comparison for anybody right now. The Patriots uh, are very small at corner, and that's not a surprise to anybody to yeah. hear me say that. So to have a bigger guy, we've been looking at guys, you know, like Miles Brooks, like Nick Jones, who has a little bit of length to him as well, that yeah. are a little bit bigger, that can play on the boundary and hold up as much as we've loved Keytrail Clark as well. Yeah. I think this year it's... You got to be at least six feet plus for the Patriots, I we think. We got know? a lot of those guys this year at the Shrine Bowl for yeah. sure, too. Yeah. I think, and I would say receiver and corner probably the two strongest groups on an NFL team so it's been a fun battle for those guys out there all week long yeah absolutely a couple of linebackers uh, that we yeah had been mentioning. A, a guy I was blown away by just you know interviewing him was uh, uh Mo Ibrahim yeah was talking to me about William McGinnis and, and Jack Lambert and then he came out he backed it up he played really well yeah um Ibrahim from Minnesota yeah yeah he's been outstanding as a running back this week all week long or, sorry not Mo Ibrahim Mo, uh, Mo Diabate Mo Diabate Mo, Mo Diabate yeah. Diabate some of his highlights at Utah 
Micah Parsons level. I mean, it's freak kind of athleticism. He's going to show at the NFL combine. Same thing again, I promise. But high 4-3 no, like, linebacker is pretty, pretty rare. And I think he's shown the ability as a pass rusher this week in coverage, dropping back, making, excuse me, making plays in the box. I think he's shown the versatility NFL teams wanted to see. And he's a smart kid, picked up things very, very quickly too. But again, he's going to be a matchup nightmare against those running back, against those slot receivers all week long in practice. Yeah, we mentioned Devin Lloyd when we were talking about him, just the role that they played in the right, Utah right. defense. Yeah. And I think it's funny because sometimes that does happen where, you know, the Patriots might have been in on Devin Lloyd if the board had <laughs> fell the right way last year, but then they go and get Mo, who is basically the same type of guy. Yeah. Uh, one other guy quickly, and then we got to wrap, uh, Orgy from Vandy. Yeah. He's made some really great plays. This yeah, too. very physical in the run game. I think that's what his NFL destiny is going to be, is winning as an interior run defender, too. And we don't. It's hard to get that sometimes from an all-star game from linebackers. I think he'll... I think he's a guy that left a shot in the game a little bit. Jack Sanborn a year ago had a great Shrine Bowl game and ended up being an undrafted guy. Surprisingly, ended up being an NFL starter for the Bears all the second half of the year, too. I think Orgy has the same kind of destiny as, as Sanborn does. Okay, I promise. Last one. I, mean, <laughs> I, I do this all the time. I say last yeah. one like six times. Uh, Tyrese Wheat. Yeah. Somebody that plays that hybrid edge role, and yeah. the Patriots just love those types of guys. Yeah, super physical, really good athlete, can be really explosive as well, too. He's had a great week of practice as well. He's been tough for offensive linemen to get around and kind of protect on the perimeter, too. But I think he's shown this week he can bull rush one on the inside as well, too. He's not just a guy that's a one-trick pony in the perimeter, too. And I think he's a great fit for a lot of defenses because yeah. he's a guy that every NFL team could use an extra pass rusher for sure. All right. Over or under how many Patriots draft picks from the Shrine Bowl? I'm going... Well, they are four last. I'll set it at 11 and a half, and we'll see what goes <laughs> They have 11 so, picks. So. Uh, um, well, we'll trade back, right? That's what you guys do? You trade back no, I, I'm saying, like, that's a good number there. there 11 and a half. 11 and a half, so. Yeah. And uh, uh, we'll we'll get that on the calendar that we're going to have you after the draft, perfect. for sure, to do another we'll be busy. recap of the draft. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you will be busy, but us first, all yeah. right? all right, perfect. All right. all right, well, this is Eric Galco, the director of the Shrine Bowl, and uh, had a great week out here in Las Vegas and Alex and I, we're going to go home now, unfortunately, Alex, but we had a great time uh, doing these shows and watching these practices and uh, we saved the best for last though. So that's Eric Galco from the Shrine Bowl. And uh, we'll be back next week on Patriots Catch 22 to break down the off season and continue rolling here at the Senior Bowl, sorry, and uh, the combine <laughs> and everything moving forward here in the NFL draft process. For Alex Barth, Eric Galco, I'm Evan Lazar. Thanks for watching everybody.